Hi everyone. This week we are shooting photography based upon light and shadow. So Edward Weston, 1886 to 1958, was one of the most renowned light and shadow photographers. And you use light and shadow for every photograph you shoot, but especially play, paying attention to it and um, essentially highlighting and shadowing simple objects was Weston's focus. You can see this is just a pepper, but it's so beautiful and almost um, figuresque with the way that he uh, framed it. And the detail in the onion in half here, um, it's beautiful with the light in the shadow worked primarily in black and white photography and I do find that black and white photography does show light and shadow the best um, so if that's something you prefer I would recommend it for this project a cabbage leaf it looks so beautiful look at all these folds look at the detail look at the highlights look at the shadows and just something so simple like cutlery in your kitchen or um, you know some things you have lying around the house food um, you can go down the street, walk down the street beside, um, shot this Paris by Night series and with a lot of lighting. So if you're shooting something outdoors at nighttime, you definitely have to put those settings on your aperture and make sure that you are um, either using a tripod or a base, but you can get some really beautiful pictures. Another by Brassai in his night series, you can see the fog and all of the highlights and shadows, very dramatic and beautiful. Um, this was called the Surrealistic Obser Observer, so the lights directly in the middle and highlighting the figure and the shadows if you want to do something like this. Andre Kurtz. So, the fork is a very simple object, but it's very dramatic with the highlights, with the shadows. Um, you could choose to do something like this, and the way you light it and the way you set it up makes all the difference. Another by him, imagine getting this picture, just, you know, all of these penguins one by one going through. Obviously this is mistitled, apologize for that. But um, any shadows, you can get a picture of your sister, or your brother, or your animal, your um, dogs, cats, whatever it you choose to do if you can get them to hold still. Like this, it's a toy, so you can do toy, the dramatic shadowing on the wall and the highlights on the horse. Or you can go outside and do a landscape with the dramatic shadowing, usually evenings or early mornings shadowing on the walls, shadowing from your windows. You also can shoot in color, so I'm put a few in here that have dramatic lighting and shadows that are in color. And the last, which is a really cute but beautiful, the shadows for this actually shows up in the with the color, so I enjoyed that, the transparency there. So, when you are done and you have the subject you're going to do, I would suggest Playful Pixlr this time around, unless you have an app that you prefer. And um, you're going to open your image, go find it wherever your pictures are. I'm going to rotate this around. And then you can see all the different options here, but I'm going to use an effect. And I'm going to use the too old effect, so I did Agnes, and then I'm going to just bring it down a tiny bit so this black and white really shows my highlights and my shadows and I'm done. So there's a lot of different types of effects you can do but ultimately you know it's oops that didn't save ultimately it's whatever you choose and apply it and then save it and hand it in. Remember to sh save as a JPEG light and shadow or whatever you choose to name hi download it and then you can put this in your Google classroom and hand in your assignment I hope everyone's doing well and I can't wait to see what you do